All right, we are in our final section of this domain, domain number five, identity and access provisioning lifecycle. Uh, the really, really short section here, only three slides in this section. Provisioning accounts. When new or existing users require additional access or resources, we have to provision their accounts. Uh, that means we have to determine what those requirements are for those accounts for them to be able to access that information and we need to apply the appropriate access rights to those accounts. So when we're provisioning elements of least privilege need to be considered, separation of duties, access segregation, users should only be provided with access to information required for them to perform their specific functions. Provisioning of access should also determine if any aspect of new access would somehow violate separation of duties processes, right? A combination of privileges or combination of controls. If they're implemented separately are okay, but if they're implemented in conjunction with each other, that can be more of a problem. Provisioning of resources are considered in light of access aggregation. It, uh, does uh, granting additional access mean access to another area should be revoked? We've mentioned that multiple times already, right? Just because you have a new role or responsibility doesn't mean that you need to maintain your old roles or responsibilities. Review, access rights and usage must be continually monitored uh, on the basis to commensurate uh, our position with our risk uh, levels and our risk appetite. Reviewing access can take the form of automated checks, manual audits, or other methods. Access found to be excessive or inconsistent with the user's role or their job functions need to be modified or restricted. Uh, and access aggregation issues are often identified as part of the review process. So they've, they've mentioned that at least four times already probably something good to know for the exam, right? Access aggregation, that term des describes, of course, the process of gaining additional access by having new job roles and responsibilities. Finally, how do we revoke the accounts? At some point, those rights need to be revoked. Maybe it's the end of the project, the end of the person's employment, whatever it might be. Uh, maybe it's an extended leave of absence. Maybe it's only temporary but we need to ensure that revocation is a, um, a, a big piece of our identity and access management. We do access reviews, uh, and through that we can do rev revocation uh, based on those reviews, maybe aggregate unnecessary access has been identified, or maybe access that's not commensurate to what that person's responsibilities are is important as well. Across identity and access provisioning lifecycle, uh, we need to ensure that the des design decisions made to create the appropriate environment for the practitioner needs to implement access and identity systems which are mapped to business objectives. And finally, the ability of the security engineer to manage those systems is ensured through decisions made by the security architect at all levels of system design. That's a really important point as well. Anytime systems are being designed or developed or integrated, we have to take into account security and in a lot of cases, identity and access management as well. So it should be part of the overall SDLC process, right? The systems development lifecycle process is to consider that access. All right. So that officially wraps up our domain, domain number five. Um, and we will move on and we'll get into domain six. Uh, a lot of great information that we're going to learn in domain six. So we'll see you there.